What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be ranking the last decade of Collingwood draft periods uh, in preparation for tomorrow's draft. So, let's get into it. Before we do get into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all Swoop Luke. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you are a returning Swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me. If you're watching this on a Tuesday, tomorrow, Wednesday, draft night, I will be hosting a live uh, watch with Squawk or watch with Swoop. Um, we'll watch it together. I'll grab a pizza. You guys will we'll eat together. We'll have a drink together um, and watch Nick Dacos get uh, drafted. But without further ado, Let's start our rankings. Okay, so this is how it is going to work. You see that we've got years 10 here, 11, 12, 13, all the way up to last year's draft, the 2020 draft. I've got an iPad with all the um, draftees. We're gonna go through uh, the national draft and the rookie draft. We're not gonna talk about any trades or, or anything uh, like that that I don't see relevant. So, let's get into it. So the 2010 draft after the grand final, who did we add? We added, well, first pick was uh, pick 45. That was Alex Fasolo, uh, Daniel Farmer, Kirk Ugel, Paul Seisman at 76, who was the diamond in the rough, uh, Trent Stubbs, and a bunch of um, other players that didn't really play. I think the only guy, Tom Young, played a couple of games. Um, and yeah, out of all those, it was really uh, Fasolo, uh, Ugle played a couple games, Seedsman. So you'll see that the rankings are goaded, great, okay, and ugh. Right, just ugh, why? So, kicking us off 2010, we're gonna go ugh. So we went with 2010 as ugh because there wasn't a lot of good that came out of it. Alex Fasolo, we know, played um, just the Tadjo for 100 games. Paul Seven played less than 50 games for us. Then he went on, you know, start in. Um, the Adelaide Club, All Australian, uh, top 40 All Australian this year. So congrats to him. Not a lot of um, beauties came out of this draft. So 2010 is going to go into the ugh category. Next up, 2011. So obviously this was after that um, grand final loss to Geelong. Who do we add? We added Petey Agmore, uh, Jackson Payne, Corey Gould, Jared Witts. Uh, Lockie Smith, Marley Williams, uh, Kalen Mooney, and Michael Hartley. So out of all those players, Wits, Williams, Jackson Payne, and Yagmo had a couple games with us as well. Uh, Jamie Elliott is a weird one because I thought he was drafted to the Pies, but he wasn't. He was technically traded from the Giants. Now, this might be a little bit of a fun fact. I don't know if you guys know this. But he was uh, pre-listed by the Giants in 2011. So they had the opportunity to, to take him on board. But we traded them um, picks 25. Uh, and we got Jamie Elliott and Marty Clark back. So that's the story of how Elliott came to our club. Um, so, so yeah, it wasn't uh, technically drafted. So Yagmore Payne, Gold Wits, Marley Williams, these players played better at their... Second clubs, you know, um, I think Payne played, uh, he went to Brisbane. Um, Wits, obviously the captain of the Gold Coast, and Marley Williams, and uh, Michael Hartley as well. Um, so, I think I'm going to give 2011 a ugh as well, just because these guys really didn't do a lot for us. Like, I know, you know, there were spurts of Wits being good and Marley Williams being good, but they were better when they had left our club. So 2012, this is when it starts getting uh, kicked into a little bit of gear. In this draft, we had picks 18, 19, and 20. With pick 18, we chose Brody Grundy. We then went Ben Kennedy, Tim Broomhead. We picked up Jackson Ramsey, Cole Martin, Sam Dwyer, Oxley Frost. Uh, Hudson came in the rookie draft. So I obviously love this draft. Um, Brody Grundy, Ben Kennedy did okay for us, um, then he went to Melbourne. I think Tim Broomhead was uh, very serviceable. Unfortunately, you know, broke his leg and was never the same. Jackson Ramsey could have been um, anything as well. So too Kyle Martin, we know the Kyle Martin story, and Sammy Dwyer, Oxley Frost. So I'm gonna, uh, I should have put another 
another one in here that was between okay and great. Um, was this a, like a great draft? Like great draft? Yeah, I think I think getting um, Brody Grundy was was great. I think he could just propel this list of guys into the um, into that great category. So 2013. Uh, this is the year that we traded in uh, Taylor Adams, Jesse White, and Patrick Carnesis. We drafted Matt Sharamur with pick six, Nathan Freeman pick 10, uh, Tommy Langdon 65, and John O'Marsh 77. <sighs> God damn. This is the biggest what if draft. So this was the Crips draft uh, as well. Um, I think Aish was in this draft as well. Or was Aish in 2014? No, I think he was in 2013. Um, God damn. This, this could have been absolutely uh, anything. Matt Schoenberg, look, he just couldn't get his, his body right in the end. Uh, then got delisted. Nathan Freeman, we know the horror stories that he had. Um, the only saving grace was Tom Langdon. But even Tommy Langdon, as much as I love him, I just love everything about Tommy Langdon. This gets nothing more than ugh, because you just go, oh, this could have been great. We had two picks top 10, and neither of those picks played 50 games. 2014. Woof. This was when we got Jack Crispin, Levi Greenwood, Varco. Uh, we got, a, got in pick five as well. We brought in Jordan Ngoi, brought in Darcy Moore, Braden Maynard. Uh, the other three guys, Goodyear, Manto, and uh, Brendan Abbott, didn't work out. We rookie drafted Mason Cox as well. So obviously, this 2014 draft is a go to draft. Braden Maynard, Darcy Moore, uh, Jordan Ngoi, Mason Cox. Need I say more? That is, out of the, this last uh, five years of drafting, that is the go to draft. And. Um, you know, it cost us Dane Beams going down, but that's that's fine. We got brought back pick five because Beams was in his prime, so that's awesome, right? So we pick up uh, Dugowie, Moore, and Maynard, and you know, Moore could be Moore's uh, father son, so he was bit on. That's why we didn't pick nine. Uh, but Moore could be future captain and 2014 Chef's kiss. Okay, so 2015, we're halfway through the decade now. This draft was. Bit of a weird one because our first pick was pick 32, so we were trading out a lot of um, picks and stuff like that um, because we drafted, or not drafted, sorry, we traded in uh, Adam Trelaw, so we lo lost our um, pick seven, I think it was. Uh, so our first rounder, we also brought in Jeremy Howe and James Aish uh, via trades. In the draft, we picked up Braden Side with our first pick 32, Tom Phillips, Rupert Wills, Ben Crocker, Josh Smith, uh, Tim gold so I think Tom Phillips did really well uh, Braden Sire literally could have been anything uh, Rupert Wills did good uh, then he dropped off a little bit when Sire got prominent and it was just a little bit a um, little bit like that uh, Rupert Wills could have been a big what were, what were we calling him a bear a machine well, he was just bollocking you know through that through that midfield um, but 15, I'm going to give it a okay. Because it's not great, and it's not ugh. It's okay, you know. Sire, we saw glimpses of what he could have been, and Tom Phillips was um, really good as well. So, 2016 now. Our first pick didn't come on until pick 30. Again, trading out, um, you know, picks and stuff like that. So, with pick 30, our first pick, we picked up Sam McClarty. Uh, Callum Brown was a father-son pick at 35. Kale Kirby, pick 50. Josh Dacos, pick 57, father-son. Joshy Dacos. Um, and, you know, with I'm sure the free agents, we brought in uh, Chris May and Daniel Wells. Will Hoskin Elliott came in, and uh, Lyndon Dunn as well. Uh, this draft, Callum Brown, Josh Dacos. Dacos has taken off, right? He's been... He, he's only going to get uh, better from here. Had a breakout uh, 2020... You know, in a little bit of injuries in 2021. Uh, Callum Brown, he hasn't really taken off to the place that we want him to go, but I know that he will definitely uh, get there. Cal Kirby retired because of heart problems. By all means, you know, hearing that he could have been an uh, absolute pocket, uh, pocket rocket um, as well. I think this draft is okay. 
only because we don't have a good in there. If we had good, it'll be good. Um, but we're going to give it an okay because I don't want to put it into the great category because we only picked up uh, Dacos and Brown. That's, you know, of note. 2017. Now, 2017. I know you guys uh, love 2017. Jaden Stevenson, pick six. Nathan Murphy, pick 39. Tyler Brown, 50. Then Flynn Appleby. Then Brody Majek. You know what? It's taken us a while, but... This is actually goaded. Stevenson won uh, the rising star in his first year. Uh, Nathan Murphy. Look, we still haven't found a proper place for Nathan um, Murphy. But he, he, the way he puts his body on the line, I absolutely love that. Tyler Brown, by all means, he's probably going to be better than uh, Callum Brown. Flynn Appleby, yes, he's not playing for us um, anymore. But Brody Majek, like... Checkers was a rookie draft, right? Pick 22, drafted as a key position back, um, and he's kicked 124 goals, and he's nearly played 100 games. That's goaded. Yeah, that's absolutely goaded um, draft for me, personally. In 2018, we brought back Dane Beams. Um, we brought in Isaac Quainer with our first selection at pick 13. Will Kelly, 29. Atu Bosna Valagi, 77. We also had uh, Keenan Tohu as our international signings, and then Johnny Noble in the mid-season draft that we are definitely going to count. I think this is a great draft. Isaac Quaynor is going to be the best halfback um, of his generation. I've said it. That's what it is. Isaac Quaynor will be the best halfback uh, of his generation. So from 2018 onwards, Will Kelly, he's played three games. We, he hasn't had a run of it. It's hard to tell, but... From what you can see and what you see on the training track and the glimpses that you get of him, by all means, he is going to be an absolutely, absolute phenomenon when he does um, play. And then John Noble signing, Mark Keane, he'll get tested. Justin Lepich will um, give him the go around and hopefully he becomes a, a key pillar down back for us. So that's why I'm going with great. Only two more years. So 2019, our first draft pick was pick 40, Jay Rantel. Bianco comes in at 45 and Trey Rusco. I think this is another great year. Trey Bianco will be a future captain. Uh, Trey Rusco. <sighs> Trey is a, is a weird one because he was really good at the start as that forward. Then he dropped off. I thought he was going to get um, delisted or, or traded. But then he found his craft off the half back line. Then you see what he's done over preseason. Look, yes, we lost Jay Rantel. Um, and I would put this in the good category, um, but I'm leaning more towards great because you can see uh, what Bianco and Rusco will be like. Now, 2020. The infamous 2020 draft. Pick 17, Ollie Henry. 19, Finlay McRae. 23, Reef McGuinness. 30, Poulter. 31, McMahon. 44, McCurry. Ginevan, uh, Chug, and then Johnson and Begg in the mid-season draft. So this draft, I'm going to call this draft really early and say that it is, it is a goated draft. I know we haven't seen a lot of these players play. The uh, main one we've seen play is Bo McCurry's played 13 games. Ollie Henry started off the year um, poorly only because he shouldn't have played that early game. Um, he needed more time in the VFL. But then was a monster down back, kicking you know multiple goals in multiple games. Finlay McRae, I saw someone on Twitter say that oh, I think it was Ben Cunningham on Twitter said he will be the steal of the 2020 draft. Reece McGinnis, we haven't seen him play at AFL level. We've seen what he can do um, in the VFL a little bit when he hasn't been injured, and then uh, pre with the charges and stuff. Caleb Poulter off that wing. McMahon, we haven't seen a lot of besides VFL stuff. McCreary is just a pressure king. Ginnivan has got to be that uh, pocket rocker that we need in the forward line. Um, Chug is going to take a lot of uh, work on the rookie draft, but um, he'll be in the halfback line. So I've got him, or I've got them, sorry, goaded. So I've got 14, 17, and 20 as goaded. And remember, I'm going to put this link down below so you can do your own um, your own tier as well. And share it with me. Let me know your thoughts. But that's what I've gone with. And remember, 14 had uh, Grundy. 17 was uh, Stevenson, Murphy, Brown. Looking at that now, maybe that wasn't a goat. Maybe it was a... 
I think that, I think I'm gonna put that back to grey because Stevenson and Meyer check. Oh, that's so hard. No, that's how I'm keeping it now. That is how I'm keeping it now. The only ones we got go to now are 2014 and 2020. A very early call on 2020. But swoopers, that's my opinion. That's my tier list. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Jump into this tier list. Do it yourself. I'd love to see him. Um, DM me on Insta. Chuck them through on Twitter if you can as well. But until next time, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you all later.